system um, development by talking about our work on uh, a gas sensing, but particularly by uh, talking about the, the system development. And we're involved in a project that uh, the application of which is mine safety monitoring. So uh, we continue to, to dig deeper to get the resources uh, from the earth and uh, as a result we're exposing ourselves increasingly to more, more threats from explosions and, and toxic environments, particularly in this uh, underground environment. Uh, and uh, with this we find a growing need for, for gas monitoring. And the application requirements are we want constant monitoring um, and, and real-time monitoring uh, of an unknown gas mixture. So we don't have the luxury of knowing exactly what the bad guys might be, uh, but we want to be able to, to identify a wide variety. And uh, putting these into wearable or portable type um, mechanisms so that individual miners, individual uh, occupants can, can keep track of their environments. So we envision something uh, like this, and just imagine this, this wristwatch type thing, but something that can stay out of the way of miners, be worn on their body, placed on their equipment, uh, and, and take care of uh, all their monitoring needs without any input from them. So we, our project, overall project goes to develop these portable wearable gas monitoring devices that can provide mixed gas concentration measurements in a real time. Now, quickly go through. There are there are some gas monitoring, gas mine gas mine gas monitoring devices out there. They tend to be very high priced, uh, quite large, suitcase style, or even somewhat smaller, but uh, not something that you can wear and forget about. Uh, and um, a big part of that is the fact that they consume a lot of power, and some of them require frequent calibration and maintenance. So these are the the challenges that we're trying to overcome by introducing some new technologies. Uh, there are some new devices out there. Uh, they tend to be targeted for individual gas types, can't measure wide varieties uh, of the gases we would want. Um, some of them can do detection, like say, oh, we found that there's methane here, but we don't know the concentration. And then again, maintenance and power are still, still issues. So um, we've summarized our bottlenecks for the research include power size, this multi-gas detection capability, and then overall cost. So in this um, presentation, what I want to talk to you about is developing a new system level uh, um, design approach that will allow us to overcome these bottlenecks. And, and we've done this by breaking our gas sensor array into these elements here, the gas interface, the, the, uh, the front end interface, the electronics. And then because we're looking at arrays, we know that there has to be a, these uh, array processing algorithms to take care of this and ultimately it's electronic system that has to be controlled and we will filter all of whoops, the top. we'll filter all of these through these uh, system performance goals funnel we call it in order to achieve all of these things which we sort of break into system there sorry I'm trying to point for you but it keeps tapping um, <clears throat> a, a sensing a set of sensing goals and a set of system level goals and ultimately to be able to generate this miniaturized multi-gas monitoring system on the end. All right, so design approach, not terribly unique, but important that we look at this uh, from a system point of view because all of these elements have to come together in order to, uh, in order to achieve this. So we'll start by talking about the gas sensor technologies. And I, I will talk a little bit about this, but I want to point out that some of this we've already published so I'm just kind of bringing you up to date on, on, on our position on this. So um, we've looked at a variety of different uh, technologies that are used in gas sensing and uh, quantified them uh, with these smiley faces and frowny faces. And we see that no technology is really good, right? They all have problems. Uh, but we've decided to focus on electrochemical sensors because we think we've identified ways to as we'd say in English, turn the frowns upside down um, using different techniques. So this uh, maintenance issue, we can feel like we can achieve it by using room temperature ionic liquids as our sensing material, electrolyte material. The uh, interference issues we will uh, tackle by doing arrays and these uh, regression algorithms, array processing algorithms in module, and then the response, we're going to look at some interesting 
a gas into structures that will improve our response time. So the typical working principle of this you know, electrochemical electrolyte based sensors is that you have an electrode and electro electrolyte sensing material uh, and gas permeates through the membrane to the electrode where there's an exchange and we measure the current. Um, you can do, depending on the absorption mechanisms or the interaction mechanisms, either amperometry or impedance spectroscopy. Um, and traditionally, uh, it's been done with either these solid or, or uh, liquid electrolytes, uh, which have, again, a mix of good things and bad things about them. Uh, and we, but we've decided to take a look at ro these room temperature ionic liquids, where, again, it's a very, it's very quantitative, or uh, excuse me, qualitative assessment here. Uh, but we feel overall has a better capabilities, but still suffers from one main disadvantage, and that's being slow. And we've addressed this uh, by introducing a new structure that, uh, again, was very quick, but a uh, new structure that improves response time. It allows the gas to uh, get to the liquid electrolyte interface very quickly by uh, passing through a porous Teflon membrane. And this was published in the IEEE Sensors Journal actually this year. So I'll direct you there or talk to me afterward if you have any questions about that structure. So beyond the uh, sensor array, we'll turn to the instrumentation electronics. And the instrumentation electronics have to maintain a, a, a wide variety of, of these requirements, including uh, keeping up with the resolution of the sensor, minimizing power, doing multiple channels for arrays, and we want to do multiple detection techniques because different gases actually can be um, Extracted the information can be extracted using different electrochemical techniques, and then of course power and co or size and cost are important. So we've pr developed this a multimodal electrochemical readout circuit using a novel resource sharing architecture that uh, deals with the these uh, primarily these requirements. It maintains its high resolution, but also provides avenues for us to get low power consumption while we're doing multi detection modes and multi channel. So this. Uh, system is composed of an AC signal generator for the impedance techniques, a four channel, and I should say this is a four, we're built this particular version here, the four channel readout circuit. It's a four channel potential stat that take care of all the DC biasing. Uh, the readout channels include a current to voltage conversion, and then a uh, architecture that's hard to get into very briefly here, but that supports both amperometry and impedance spectroscopy measurements, um, and again, sharing resources. So we have the three different outputs from the device, are, are the amperometry mode signals, and then these real and imaginary components. I should also mention, based on some prior, several prior publications from my group, we're using uh, methods to extract real and imaginary components with the electronics. So that's done, this, this front end signal processing is done within the electronics too. And then finally, a low power filter to reduce noise. So that's the, the general architecture here for our instrumentation electronics. We'll, we'll point out that uh, it, one of the, the key design criteria here were to uh, provide extensive hardware sharing between the two different modes, amperometry and EIS, and between the different, the, the, the different detection channels. So with those electronics in place, or, I'm sorry, I forgot. I have well, this sort of analyzes the uh, results that you, if you will, at the design level of our instrumentation electronics. So, if we'll direct your attention here to this row where it says without resource sharing, and if n is the number of channels in the detection, then we can go through these each of these stages and identify uh, somewhat qualitatively the total count of electronics. Uh, that are associated with this and see that we were able to, with our resource sharing uh, techniques, to break this down to roughly 50% of the uh, components uh, to reduce area and power. Okay, so uh, now we'll turn our attention to the next block in the design, which is the, uh, the control. Uh, we implemented this on a microcontroller, uh, but we're, we're really breaking down all the tasks. Um, the, the, the more simple and you know, engineering level tasks are the, uh, the control elements where you have to receive commands from the user and, and, uh, and direct the electronics to do the job you want to, collect the data, send it back, communication kind of stuff that for most of you in this room that's a relatively straightforward type task. Uh, but the signal processing layer is, is also implemented in there. So this mouse goes to sleep and will not wake up for a while. Um, 
um, is designed to identify and quantify individual gas concentrations within the mixed signal, uh, the mixed gas environment. And uh, rather than put details in this presentation, I'll direct you to, we have a poster on Wednesday at this conference. Um, and the, so you can look up my name uh, or um, my student, uh, Yunin Young, and we can uh, talk to you about the signal processing elements at that poster. So we've got the gas sensors, the instrumentation electronics, and, and this control, and we bring them all together. Now this is to the implementation of our system. Um, this is a uh, some blow-ups of the sensor device itself, uh, the porous Teflon background, interdigitated electrodes put into an array, and um, then fabricated onto the uh, gas sensor device. This is the uh, prototype implementation of what we call the uh, multi-mode electrochemical instrumentation board. Um, and then we're using a commercial uh, Texas Instruments controller to generate our system. And this is what it all looks like, a board stack that all comes together. Still, you know, medium-sized, uh, hard, to, hard to call this wearable at this point, but this is our, our prototype of what we call the Intelligent Gas Analysis System, or IE Gas. And uh, we've started working toward the Generation 2, which is to throw this into something that's USB-sized or can be conformed any, any way after that. And quickly through the results, so the gas sensors, this is showing the gas sensor monitoring uh, methane, NO2, SO2, O2, each on a different sensor, each biased to a different electrochemical potential, uh, and showing uh, um, uh, good responses to all those gases. The, um, this is talking about selectivity. Uh, very quickly, just the, look at, it's kind of hard to read quickly, but the, this one shows the sensor responding the, uh, C, the methane sensor responds to methane, but not to SO2, while the SO2 sensor responds, uh, has shows no response to this. So we're getting good selectivity, primarily through these electrochemical uh, biasing techniques. Uh, each sensor is biased to their own potential. As an integrated system, we did a test on this. Uh, here's a, a, an example O2 response. So the top is amperometry, the bottom is EIS mode. So you can see it responding to changing, and there's a calibration curve. We see a linear response for amperometry, and a nonlinear but, uh, but calibrated, calibratable um, response for EIS. Um, overall, this version 1 is implemented about 6 milliwatts, and we're getting sensitivities of much, much less than a percent for oxygen. Um, um, so in conclusion, we've presented this prototype intelligent uh, electrochemical gas analysis system that includes the system level design methodology that overcomes the, bo the bottlenecks of a wearable multi-gas monitoring device. It includes a room temperature ionic liquids and electrochemical detection to detect a variety of mine gases. Uh, we use a resource sharing electrochemical instrumentation circuit that does two electrochemical modes and significantly reduces power, cost, and size. And we implement on a microcontroller these uh, sensor array regression algorithms uh, and all the controls and communications we need. So with that, I'd like to thank our sponsor um, the, the, in the U.S., the CDC, uh, National Institutes of uh, Occupational Safety and Health. And uh, thank you for your time.